Good morning and a very warm welcome to Kegworth Baptist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. If you're a regular member of our online congregation, welcome back. And if you're new to Kegworth Baptist Church, thank you so much for joining us. You are very welcome. This morning, our message will be brought to us by Steve Cooper. But let's see what's happening in the church this week. We have the following events at Kegworth Baptist Church this week. Friday mornings, 10 a.m. till 12 is our Oasis Coffee Morning in the hall. Sunday mornings, 10.30 is our worship here in church. Also, Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. till 12 p.m. is our warm welcome space, which is separate from the service. Come and join us for a cup of tea, a chat, some quiet time or read a book. Everybody is welcome to all of our Kegworth Baptist Church events. Also, if you need to contact us, you can email us at mail at kegworthbaptist.org.uk. So before we hear from Steve, let's start this morning's worship with the song Power of Your Love.
Greetings, friends of Kegworth Baptist Church. I want to share a reading from God's Word first and then some thoughts based on this reading. I'm reading from Psalm 121. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Thanks be to God for that reading from his word. I want to think about that psalm this morning and really pose the question that the psalmist posed. Where does my help come from? The psalmist started by saying he lifts up his eyes to the hills and then he says, where does my help come from? What I want you to notice first of all is that the hills was not a place uh, where the psalmist looked forward to going. It was a, an area that he had to go through to get to Jerusalem. At least four times a year he would go up to Jerusalem for the four major feasts that took place uh, through the Jewish year. And the mountains represented a place of fear. Uh, because there there was idol worship took place on the mountains and it was where the, the robbers and the bandits would uh, hang out and when you were going through that area it would not be surprised to be attacked, uh, to be robbed, to be beaten and in the case of the Good Samaritan story that Jesus told the folks were not surprised that he was left half dead and that was the fear that the psalmist had. He said, I've got to make this journey I'm on a journey, I'm a pilgrim on a journey, uh, but I know that there's fearful things that can happen and will happen. So where do I find my help? You know, we're all pilgrims on a journey. If we know the Lord Jesus Christ, then we're on a journey. And it's a journey that takes us from here on earth and takes us finally into glory to be with him. But on that journey, there will be problems, there will be dangers, there will be difficulties. There will be times when we will struggle. So this psalm is very much for each and every one of us as we seek to follow our Lord. So I want you to see, first of all, the psalmist, where was his source of help? He says, my help comes from the Lord. Five times in this psalm, he mentions the Lord. And the word that he uses in the original Hebrew is Yahweh which is that covenant name of God that he gave to his people, the Jews. And it's the name that identifies him as the, uh, the self-existing, eternal, unchangeable God who is in charge of everything, who controls all. And so the psalmist identifies the one who's going to help him as this amazing God. And he is the one that's going to help him. He is the one that's going to turn uh, the tide in his favour. How does he describe him? He describes him as the creator of heaven and earth. He reminds himself, look, if God can create all this, if God can hold all this together, then surely he can look after me. He can take care of me. And so the psalmist's hope wasn't some vain hope, but it was fixed very securely in the God that he knew, the God that he loved, and the God that he knew loved him and he was seeking to walk with. He says, this is the God who stood on the edge of nothing and spoke into existence everything that we know and see. He says, he's got the power. He's the source of my help. What about the scope of the help? When is it that God helps us? In verse 3, he, he says he helps those who slip. 
He says we'll keep our foot from from slipping. <clears throat> if we're honest, we all slip, don't we? We all have moments when we slip into sin. When instead of walking humbly with our God, we do something different. We're told that the Lord is our keeper. The one who holds us will keep us. He will preserve us. He will uphold us. He has taken responsibility for us. You know, when we come to Jesus Christ and we find in him salvation and freedom and new life, at that moment, he says, I will be with you to the very close of the age. There's nothing in all creation that will ever be able to separate you from me. And so he's going to walk with us through this life. And he's going to be the one who upholds us when we slip. Because slip we will. There will be times when we will fail, when we will commit sin. He also says, this God who will keep us from slipping is the one who doesn't slumber. He doesn't sleep. He's not only the one that will stop us from slipping, but he is the one who will watch over us. We get tired, we get weary, we need our sleep. We're told as we get older, we need more sleep. I can say amen to that. Uh, but you know, our Lord never slumbers. He never sleeps. He's always awake. He's always watching. He's always working on your behalf and my behalf. Even when I am completely comatose, fast asleep, he's watching over me. He's working on my behalf. There's a beautiful story told. In World War II, Germany had been bombing London uh, and it was devastating bombing. And one night it was particularly bad. And when daylight came, the security people and the air raid wardens and uh, the fire brigade and everybody were out searching the streets, uh, looking through the rubble, looking for survivors, looking for the injured, bringing out those that had died. And they accounted for everybody on this street except one person, uh, a, a grandma. They couldn't find Granny Smith. And eventually they located her. She was in her bed, in her bedroom, fast asleep. And they woke her up and they said, Granny Smith, how come you can sleep through the, the bombing that's taken place overnight? And she looked at them and she said this, and this is priceless. She says, she said, well, the Bible says that he who keeps Israel never slumbers nor sleeps. I decided there was no use in us both staying awake the night. So I went to sleep and left it to God. And what a beautiful attitude that is. Our God never slumbers, never sleeps. He's always working on our behalf. Isn't that a blessing to know him? And then the psalmist says that he helps those who struggle. He goes on from just walking as a pilgrim. But he says, you know, we're more than pilgrims. We're in a battle. We're in a fight. We're in a fight against the evil forces of this world. We're in a spiritual fight, not a physical fight, a spiritual fight. And he said he's the one who's going to protect us from our enemies. He speaks about there being our shade on our right hand. What he was talking about was the picture of a soldier. A soldier would carry a sword in his right hand and a shield in his left hand. Therefore, the left hand side of his body was easily shielded. But the right hand side was rather defenseless. And God is saying, look, I'm going to be on that defenseless right hand side of you to protect you and to keep you there's no way that you're coming under attack from that side because i am walking with you it's a wonder to know that we have such a god who protects us from our enemies he also protects us not only from our enemies but from from the elements i've used a double e here he, he protects us from the elements the psalmist said 
he saves us from the sunstroke and uh, the 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 moonstrike, uh, which is what he's talking about here in the psalm. We know very well what he's talking about when he talks about sunstroke. It's one of those dangers when we live in a climate where there's an awful lot of sun. We can get too much sun and that can be, well, it can be fatal. And the psalmist said, look, my God is going to protect me from those elements which seem to be natural. They're around us all the while. He's going to protect me. But the moonstroke is unlike sunstroke because it doesn't affect the body. What the ancients thought about as moonstrike was what we would, would call mental illness, which is where the old expression for people who had mental illness, lunatic, came from, Luna, the moon, uh, and it, they ref would think that somehow the moon has a bearing on their mental stability. And so the psalmist said, he's going to keep me from the natural things of this world, uh, from the sunstroke, as it were, from the difficulties of this world. But he's also going to keep my mind so that I don't come under attack from Satan, uh, that my mind is not weakened and my body is not weakened. Friends, what a wonder to have a God like that who is so close to us, who is watching over us every step of life's journey and keeping us, not only from the harm, the natural harms, but he is the one who keeps us from the mental harms as well. He can keep us physically, emotionally and mentally strong. He protects us in such a way that we know his peace, the peace of God, which goes beyond understanding. That's the scope of his help. Oh, what a wonder we have such a, a source of help, the creator, sustainer God. And he covers our physical and our mental well-being. And then the psalmist goes on and he says that he preserves us from all evil. Have you noticed how easy it is? For us to fall into sin. Why is that the case? Well the scripture says we were born with a sinful bent in our nature. It comes naturally. We find it good. We like it. The Lord will help us to overcome. What scripture talks about that sin that so easily sets us this keeper that we have will keep us firm in our faith. How did Jude put it at the end of his uh, little letter in the 24th verse of Jude? He says this, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence uh, in glory with exceeding joy. He says, you know, this is the God we have. He will not only give us peace, He'll keep us from falling and he will keep us for eternity until we arrive in his presence. We can overcome, we can persevere and finally he will present us in eternity. He speaks about in the psalm, he watches over us, our going in, uh, sorry, our going out and our coming in. You know, he watches over us even when we're going out from his presence. When we've put the thoughts of our God to the back of our brain, when we are focused on other things, when we have no time or no thought for him, he is the one who still watches over us, who still protects us. And when we come back, we have that story of the prodigal son in the New Testament, don't we? of the way that God welcomes us, welcomes us back as we come back into his presence, as we come back to worship him, the God who watches over us, the God who keeps us. Do you know that God? Do you have peace with him? If you do, then we should live a life without fear. 
We can look, as the psalmist did at the very beginning, to the areas of danger and the areas of difficulty. And he says, the hills are a dangerous place, but my God will uphold me and keep me as I go through that experience. I don't know what you're going through at this moment. It may be an experience that is very dark, that is very difficult. It may be an experience that you've been working through for a long time. Friends, let me remind you again, God will not give up on you. He will continue to walk with you through the difficulties, through the dangers. He will uphold you. He will keep you from evil. He will guard your steps. He will stop you from slipping and falling and going away from his presence. Why? Because he is the God who loves us. Not because we're worth it, not because we're any good, but because he loves us. And he says, because I love you, then I will keep you. I will protect you. I will uphold you. So the psalmist looked to the dangers and the difficulties and he said, where does my help come from? I need help. Where do I find that help? He says, I find my help in the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, the one who controls the universe, is prepared to protect, to guide and to keep you. If you don't know him, now's the time to seek after him to discover this God who will walk with you through this life, to keep you, to guard you and to uphold you. That is the God we have. That is the God that the psalmist knew. That is the God who today says, take my hand, walk with me, enjoy the blessings of my presence. Isn't that amazing? The final word from our God is simply saying, trust me, don't worry, because I have your hand. I've planned the path you take and I will never let you go. Safe for time and for eternity. Where does your help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Let's just pray. Father God, we recognise that in this world we will have struggles, we will have difficulties. There will be battles that we have to fight uh, with the evil forces of this world. But Father, we thank you that as pilgrims on our way to heaven, we have one who will guard us. We have one who will keep us. We have one who will guide us. Father God, we thank you for your keeping, for your guiding, for your protection. We thank you, Father, that you are the one there who picks us up when we fall. You're the one who holds our hands so we do not fall away from you. You're the one that, should we go away, will welcome us back with open arms. Father, I just pray that your word will bear fruit in the lives of each one of us today. And we ask this prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May God bless you. May you know his presence with you. And may you experience his help as you walk through this world.
Thank you, Steve, for your message this morning. If anybody needs any prayer or practical support or wants to talk to us about anything that Steve has said this morning, please do contact us and we will do our very best to help you and pray with you. And let us finish this morning's worship by blessing one another with the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>